We love the rainy season here at Lakeside in Ahihik, but I'm always saying it never rains in the daytime. Mother Nature is making a liar out of me today. Let me show you what the leafcutter ants did to my beautiful fern the night before last. Just sticks left. They took all of the leaves. Same day, 4 p.m., it has cleared and the sun is starting to burn through the clouds. And the air is fresh and everything is clean. You're safe and you know it. Presto. <laughs> Came from my Uncle Dick's garage in Mission, South Dakota in the 1950s. What was the temperature? 66 degrees. July 24th. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. We're going to go right over here and I want to show you something. Some time ago I got these really strong magnets. This is a magnet right here. Like that. And I put them right there on my tripod. And then I put one of those discs that you put on your phone on the bottom of my camera. So, watch this. There it is. I got tired of clicking and unclicking it, so it just works great. And then I also have a magnet that I just stick on the side of the van, and um, I can stick the camera there. And I put one of those discs on the bottom of my GoPro. It's working great. I figured out something else with those magnets. I did it by accident, but look at this. I got them in my pocket, and I pulled my money out of my pocket, and I got one of those magnets in it. So it all sticks to the magnet instead of having a pocket full of loose change. No more loose change. It's the solution to loose change. It's all stuck to the magnet. Plus, the 10 peso coins, now this isn't going to work in the United States because in the United States the money doesn't stick to a magnet. But if you live in Mexico, try this out. Put a magnet in your pocket. The 10 peso coins don't stick, so even though they're all mixed up, it's almost like magic to separate them. See there? <laughs> there is one thing that I think I need to be careful about, and that is that I keep the magnet, and it's a very strong magnet, in a separate pocket from the money clip and the credit cards because I believe a magnet might mess up the magnetic strip on the credit cards. I'm not sure about that, but maybe somebody can tell me if that's possible or not without me putting a magnet in the wrong pocket and not having any uh, debit cards anymore. Anyway, if you want some of those magnets, uh, I think I put them on my Amazon store page, which you can access in the link below. Speaking of my Amazon store page, um, I know some of you have noticed that and order stuff. I'm sure you know how it works, but I get a small commission. It's actually somewhere around 4% of most things, unless you're ordering lipstick. If you're ordering lipstick, please order lipstick. I get 10% of cosmetics, I think. <laughs> the markup must be greater. Anyway, I appreciate it if you use my Amazon link. It makes a little money for me. Um, let me tell you how much money it makes. Um, last month, I haven't gotten paid yet because I haven't been doing it that long, but and it takes like 60 days before you get paid, but I think I made $28 last month from people just ordering stuff. So <laughs> Maybe it'll buy me another camera. I can make better videos for you. Uh, anyway, thanks if you're doing that. I, I do appreciate it. So what else do I have to tell you about? Yesterday, I did uh, an interesting thing. 
a friend, subscriber, called me up and said, hey, I've got a drone, let's play. And we went and played, and we may be making some drone videos, so that'll be fun. I wanted to show you over here that I finally got my fiber optic modem. This is the old DSL uh, modem from Telmex, and I still have that. And this is the um, fiber optic from ILOX. The ILOX internet report. I'm paying for the minimum service. Um, it's 590 pesos a month, which is like 30 some dollars. And I'm promised three, 30 megabits down and I'm getting about 28 and down and 9 megabits up, which compared to my old Telcel was incredible. As a matter of fact, the first video I uploaded was a YouTube video for you guys, and it was a 20-minute video, and I said it, and I came back about uh, 10 minutes later, it was almost done. It took 12 minutes instead of before it took 10 hours to upload a video of that length. A curious thing happened, however. My old Telmax DSL service, the modem I just showed you, the day after I got the ILOX fiber optic connection, the speed came up on my Telmax account. I didn't do anything, I didn't change my plan, I didn't I'm not paying more money. It went from, I'm paying for five down and getting three. I'm still paying for five down, and I'm getting 18 down and about six up. I don't have an explanation for this, but now I'm in a quandary. Do I keep my ILOX account, or do I um, keep my Telmex account? The price is about the same, except that I'm getting my Mexican Dish Network from Telmex also, and that's why you have to sign up for two services with the ILOX uh, fiber optic internet. You get internet plus either telephone or TV. And I signed up for TV because I didn't want to cancel my Telmex telephone account because I get my Dish Network through that billing. Well, I have to straighten all of that stuff out. So right now I have two internet services. And they're both <laughs> lots faster than I've ever had in uh, 18 years here uh, at Lakeside. So I'm real happy with that. You can get much faster services, and I have friends who have, uh, are paying for the faster services up to uh, 100 megabits down um, promised, and they're getting like, 80 and 90, so um, by our standards here, that's very, very good and very, very fast. My Netflix, which used to have to buffer, is just there. Uh, I didn't really have anything to talk about today, which is why I was talking about that, but sometimes life just gives you something to talk about. I may have another banking rant for you. Let me grab some receipts. My last video, I went to Costco. And I was calculating this morning the exchange rate that I got. Now I use a Capital One 360 checking account. It's an online uh, bank account and I make deposits to that from another U.S. bank account uh, online. So that's where the money sits until I use it with a debit card here in Mexico. And I've always paid cash at Costco in the past, but now that I have this Capital One 360 account, uh, well, I'll try the debit card at Costco in Guadalajara, and that's what I did, and my bill was 3,757 pesos. And I get a notice on my phone immediately when any of my cards are used. 
And the phone dinged and said, you've been charged $198.05. And I calculated the exchange rate then at 18.97. I check on my phone all the time, and I use an online um, place to check. It's called xe.com, and it gives you the um, international exchange rates for the... Um, international markets right then and there at that minute. And you check it, you could check it, uh, you know, and then check it again 10 minutes later, and it might be different because it's really the, the ebb and flow of the actual exchange rates. Um, as I'm talking about this, don't leave me a comment and tell me that I don't understand buy and sell rates. I understand buy and sell rates. We're not talking about buy and sell rates here with regard to debit cards and ATM withdrawals. When you go to a place to exchange money, then you have to know the difference between the buy and sell rates. Not talking about that. Actually, let me talk about it. I took my grandkids two weeks ago to the exchange place here because they came to Mexico with hundred dollar US hundred dollar bills and I took them to the exchange place here and the sell rate was 19 and the buy rate was 16 uh, 17.6 or something like that and I calculated it out that uh, they would have been much better off to have used an ATM but that's not what I'm talking about today and what I am talking about today if you get your money in U.S. dollars and you don't live in the United States so you're dealing with exchange rates and ISA fees, that's international transaction fees and I don't care if you're using an ATM or you're doing wire transfers or you're writing a check and putting it in your uh, foreign bank account you need to pay attention to this and I know so many people that I talk to that don't get it I'm going to do some math for you and if you're living on $1,000 a month in Mexico, or you're planning to, or $2,000 a month, or $3,000 a month, or you're thinking about doing that in the future, you need to understand what I'm talking about. Anyway, at Costco on my uh, Capital One 360 debit card, I got an exchange rate that was just like a few hundredths of a point. I'm not talking about percentage points, I'm talking about exchange points a few hundred points below what was at that moment current and that's very very good I have no complaints and then I went to Walmart and at Walmart today I got 694 pesos worth of groceries and my phone immediately dinged and showed me that my uh, US dollar account with Capital One was uh, debited for $36.34 and the exchange rate was 19.1 I calculated that when I looked on my phone the exchange rate was actually 19.04 which means <coughs> excuse me what I got at Walmart was higher than what it showed me as the buy rate <laughs> on um, the international exchange. So you can't complain about getting more than you thought you were going to get. Then I, after I got my groceries checked out, I went to the ATM in Walmart here in Ahihi, and I withdrew 4,000 pesos, and my phone again immediately dinged, and it was $211.25, and I calculated that at 18.9. So that's one point one off of the exchange rate I would expect which was 19 and again I am not complaining about that it can't get any better than that unless you're actually watching <laughs> and playing the market you're not going to do better then I went to Bancomer I have a Bancomer account here in Ahihik it's the Bancomer that's down on the corner of the plaza and I've had it for many many years Many, many years ago, I used to do trans wire transfers to get money so that I could go down there and get cash, and it didn't cost me anything for the ATM fee, or I could just go to the window and withdraw cash. I don't do that anymore because I have different ways of doing it, and 
Um, nearly 20 years ago, we didn't have online banking that we have today and so on. So today, I do what I just told you I do. I, get, I use my debit card and I get cash at an ATM. <clears throat> and the 360 account doesn't charge me any uh, international transaction fee. Don't bother leaving me a comment about Les Schwab. Edit. I lived in the Pacific Northwest for 27 years, and the largest tire dealer in the Pacific Northwest is Les Schwab. They don't do international banking. That would be Charles Schwab. They don't charge international transaction fees either. And they will also refund your ATM fee if you're charged one. And that's a very good deal. Getting one is not entirely simple. Uh, I deposited a check at Bankomer today. Now, why did I have a check? A friend lost their billfold and their credit cards and needed to make an airline reservation. So I handed him my uh, credit card and said, hey, get it and write me a check. So that's what happened. So I have a check for $777.92 on a U.S. bank, and I went down to my Bankomer branch here in Ahihik to deposit that check in U.S. dollars today. And here's what happened. I deposited $777.92, and they credited me with 13,765 pesos. I calculated that as an exchange rate of 17.69. And I've heard people say this, eh, it's almost 18, that's only 1%. 1% was, is a, a dollar out of 100. No, no, no. I'm going to do some math for you here. And this is what you need to pay attention to if, like I said, you're getting your money income in a country you're not living in and you're dealing with exchange rates. Banks play this game and it's not a game. And if you don't pay attention, you'll lose. Let me tell you exactly what I'm talking about. I'm going to do some math for you. Instead of the 19, I would expect as the exchange rate, 19, I got minus 17.69. That's a difference of 1.31. And it's not 1.31 percent, meaning a dollar thirty out of a hundred. It's 1.31 exchange points. An exchange point percentage, then, if you're expecting what they give me, 17.69, divided by 17.69, that's a percentage of 7.2%. That's $7.20 out of 100, and it's $72 out of 1,000 if you're living on 1,000 a month, and it's almost 100, and, well, it's $144 out of your money if you're living on $2,000 a month and getting that kind of an exchange rate. I calculated my cost of depositing a U.S. dollar check in my Bankomer account today. It cost me 1,015 pesos for the difference in the exchange rate from what I would have gotten if I had just used my debit card at Walmart or gotten cash out of the ATM at Walmart. It cost me $53.44 to do that transaction. $53.44 US dollars as the cost of making a deposit of $777 into my Mexican bank account. Now I know people, and I said this a minute ago, I think, I, I know people that live on you know, $1,000 a month, $2,000 a month. If you're writing a check to your Mexican bank account on your U.S. bank account, and then it takes them a few days to credit your account, you're paying much 
much more than you think compared to other ways you could do it. It burns me that banks do this. You know, I don't know what banks are paying in savings accounts these days, but it's got to be like less than 1%. And even my Capital One account, I'm getting like, you know, I don't know, point two of 1% or something. I don't even pay any attention to it. It's cents, it's cents, a few cents, 18 cents a month or something. It's not important to pay attention to. But what I'm talking about is the other way around. The bank is making 7.4% on my transaction. And they're not talking about, oh, it's a return on your investment of 7.4% in a year. That'd be great. They're getting 7.4% in a nanosecond, and they're not even involved personally in the transaction. It's a computer. Don't let the banks keep taking your money. <laughs> well, that's my rant for today. Um, thanks for watching. I don't know if I got my 53 dollars worth, but it was fun making the video. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.